Hello there, fun food fans. It's Karen Ricks, head chef here at our kitchen classroom. And I am coming to you from my kitchen here in Tirana, Albania, to answer the question that most of you have been asking, if not <laughs> begging, to know every single day since my family and I arrived here in Albania almost four months ago now. And that's why Albania? <laughs> I am sipping on a nice ice cold glass of a homemade apple and cinnamon tea. It's made from ingredients all born and raised right here in Albania. And it is perfectly cool and refreshing for these cooling fall temperatures that we're starting to experience outside. What are you drinking today? Go ahead and leave me a note in the comments. Grab your glass and then I will answer your most asked question. So sweet and delicious. Oh, that is absolutely a flavor of fall. And as fall is setting in here in Albania, I am so looking forward to the coming season. Well, okay, not the cooler temperatures, actually. My family and I have encircled the globe, quite literally, in the last two years of full-time global travel. And let me tell you, Chasing summer around the world has been the most enormous blessing. So I have to say, I'm really and honestly not yet looking forward to cooler temperatures. <laughs> but it's still so nice and warm here in Albania. In fact, the city of Tirana is almost still summertime warm. You see, I've still got just my sleeveless dress on. Went out for a nice long walk yesterday. It was a little bit breezier and it's starting to get cooler in the evenings. I have had to put on a jacket. But the temperatures have been so blessedly warm that I'm still going to enjoy and drink up every last moment of the summer sunshine while we can. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Karen Ricks and I am the head chef of our kitchen classroom and I am on a mission to teach children of all ages how to celebrate life and how to love learning. And here in our kitchen classroom, we do that through food and full-time global family travel. And yes, that is a possibility, but it's a possibility that I didn't realize existed before my family and I embarked on our journey almost two years ago. And in that time, I have had the opportunity, the glorious blessing and honor of introducing myself and our work and our family travels to so many people all around the world. And without a doubt, the number one question that people will ask is, what are you doing here? <laughs> Now, it doesn't matter where we go. It doesn't matter how long we've lived in a place. People always ask that question. Why here? Why now? <laughs> Why you? What are you doing? How do you make that happen? But what's most exciting for me <laughs> is watching the, uh, the wrinkled and furrowed brows, the, the tilted heads in confusion as people hear answers that they weren't expecting. <laughs> uh, people always want to know when they hear me. They, I open my mouth and I speak and they hear an American accent speaking fluent English. Okay, so are you an English teacher? <laughs> and when we lived in Japan, which my family and I did for 10 years before we traveled the globe, that was probably the most frequent answer that people heard from native English speakers. So it wasn't surprising that that was the question people asked, do you teach English? But that was not my profession and that was not the way that I worked while we were living in Japan. When we were in Mexico <laughs> and people saw an American family, of course they wanted to know, oh, you're running away from the United States, right? <laughs> but during our time in Mexico, actually my family and I had not been back to the United States for more than 10 years. So that was a constant uh, answer that evoked surprise and shock from especially other expats who were living in Mexico. As we've begun to wander around Europe again, just like we did last year, everywhere we go, people want to know, oh, how long are you on vacation? 
And it's always a surprise for people to hear that my family and I are traveling full time. We are not on vacation. We are just living our day to day lives. And now that we have arrived here in Albania, we're living here in the capital city of Tirana every single day, whether in person in and around the community or online, people ask, why Albania? Are you wondering that question too? Maybe you're one of the people who has asked that question. Well, I am here to give you the answer. And the longer we stay here, the broader and more full that answer becomes. Now, I'm not embarrassed to say that despite my love of world travel and having traveled for decades, I still had to go and seek out a map to find where Albania was when I was first introduced to the idea of living in Albania. And I first heard about it and started to consider the possibilities when it was mentioned by my friend and mentor, Monique Alvarez. She and her family had been living here last year. She jumped online one day on social media, was sharing a video talking about what a beautiful place it was for families to travel, for digital nomads. And as a mother, hearing from another mother, an entrepreneur, who said that it was a great place to live with young children, my ears definitely perked up. And so Albania started to move up a little bit higher on our list of places to consider as my family and I continue to travel the world. But it still wasn't uh, something that was set and scheduled. I didn't immediately buy plane tickets and head over. In fact, as I said, initially, I still had to go and check out a map and see where is Albania and why haven't I heard of this place before? If it's so great, why aren't more people there? <laughs> well, I did look and I found Albania just across the Adriatic from the boot of Italy, sticking out over on the eastern side of Europe. And I started to see that it wasn't quite so far or as isolated as I might have initially imagined. But this country has been isolated for quite a long time. The borders, the walls, the people were closed up behind a curtain of communism. And so it's only over the last few decades that this country has really been open for exploration. And more and more, as people are discovering this gem of the Balkans, I just know that more people will want to flock to this beautiful country. Um, now, my family and I had actually been living in Italy for the second time in our travels before arriving here in Albania. And so proximity here in Europe was one of the reasons that we decided to come here as well. But in all honesty, we had been seeking a place that, like Monique said, it was family friendly. It was accessible. It was open to travelers. And as US passport holders, we could buy our plane tickets and fly in without a lot of additional paperwork or documentation and stay visa free for 12 months. Now, as world travelers, we have been hopping from one country to the next and we are ever mindful, of making sure that we are in compliance with local laws and that we are really contributing to the communities in which we live. And so finding a place that was welcoming, opening its borders, opening its arms to US travelers was really exciting to find. And so from Italy, we booked our tickets one way. <laughs> one way tickets are all we've been buying for the last two years, crazily enough. And in just an hour and a half, we had made that flight from Pisa right here to the capital city of Tirana. And let me tell you, Albania has not failed to live up to all of the bountiful expectations that we had coming in. Everybody has been so incredibly warm and welcoming. 
We have met so many wonderful uh, multilingual people as well. For the first time in our family's travels, we have arrived in a country where we did not speak a single word of the local language. And I have to say, I was kind of embarrassed about that but it didn't matter. People have been so incredibly welcoming. And we have met not only a lot of English speakers here who have helped us to feel that much more welcome, but also, as I said, many other multilingual people, especially in areas of hospitality and tourism and service. So uh, having conversations in Spanish or Italian, we've also heard lots of German and French and Greek, there are so many people who speak so many languages here. It hasn't been at all difficult to communicate as we are expanding our Albanian vocabulary as well. The weather, as I mentioned, has been absolutely beautiful. We arrived here in the summertime and we experienced wonderfully warm temperatures. Now I like it hot, so I'm not one to complain about the heat, but we've also had air conditioning too. So that wasn't a problem when the temperatures really started to climb up. And the country is absolutely gorgeous. We're here in the capital city, which is incredibly colorful. I mean, there are literally rainbows splashed on the walls of the buildings. There's gorgeous artwork. Uh, and I'm just not talking about painting, but, but sculptures and interactive pieces. And there are galleries and shows. There's theater and music. There are street performers out in the square in the middle of the night. It is safe. It is family friendly. It has been so warm. And, and let me tell you a story that illustrates just how amazing this place is. The other day, I had been out running some errands and I was walking back home and I decided to stop at a local Bidek shop. Now, for those of you who haven't been following my blog, <laughs> Bidek is a delicious flaky, savory pastry that is just as common here in Albania as peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, as onigiri in Japan, as tacos in Mexico. There is bidek everywhere. And you can find these flaky pastries at all sorts of places. In fact, I think we've counted at least four or five different shops that sell bidek, literally within like one circular block of our apartment here. So it is everywhere. And the pastries are delicious. Delicious. So I was on my way walking back home and I decided to stop and pick up some BDAC. Now there's this tiny little shop. It's no bigger than a, a walk-in closet and uh, there's no signage or anything out front. Just a woman steadily working hard behind a half a little curtain to get back to her ovens, um, cranking out these pastries day after day. And I've walked by this place countless times in the months that we've been here and waved and said hello. And I think I actually made my first BDEC purchase just last week from her. Well, it's really inexpensive, so I just grabbed some change out of my pocket and paid for it the last time, and so I was expecting to do that again without a problem. I stepped up to the counter, and I ordered my pastries, and she's pulling them out, and I reached down into my pocket, and as she's sliding them into the paper bag, and I could hear all that flaky pastry crackling, my mouth was just watering in anticipation. <laughs> oh. So I pulled the change out of my pocket to pay and I'm counting out the coins and she's double checking because there are a couple of coins, especially the small ones that look very similar. And she told me it wasn't enough. And I was like, oh dear. Well, I reached down into my bag, I dug into my wallet to get out some more money. And unfortunately, all I had was a 500 lek bill, which is about $5. But as I said, these pastries are inexpensive and she didn't have enough smaller bills or coins to be able to make change for me. I was so apologetic and I was prepared to turn around and just walk away, you know, maybe break some, uh, break the bill somewhere else and get change and come back later or another day. And you know what she told me? She said, don't worry about it. She said, you can pay me the difference the next time you come back. Okay, now this is a woman who doesn't know me from Joe Schmo walking down the street. Like I said, I've walked past there countless times and I have purchased pastries from her, I think once or maybe twice before. And she said, don't worry about it. And I walked away with that bag full of warm, flaky pastries, but with an even warmer feeling in my heart because that 
is the sort of welcoming, the sort of openness, the sort of hospitality that has absolutely characterized our time here in Albania. And for those of you who are just cynical enough to say, no, that can't happen, or, or that was just maybe you, you did something special or different, that's not the first time that that has happened here in Albania. And I can guarantee that it won't be the last. That's the sort of wonderfully warm welcome that my family and I have experienced here in Albania. And that's exactly the sort of warmth, the sort of welcoming, the sort of openness and generosity that I am excited to be able to share with all of our fans and followers here at our kitchen classroom. Because the more time we spend here in Albania, the more we get to know the wonderful and open hearts of the people that we meet here, the more we want to know, the more we want to dive in to the history and the culture and of course the cuisine. That's exactly what we're doing at our kitchen classroom. I want to invite you to come and join us. If you want a taste of that sort of warmth, if you want to experience that sort of welcoming, that is exactly what we're serving up. I'm going to leave a note in the comments here of this video. To, I want to invite you to join us in the Play With Your Food community, where we're discussing all the wonderful deliciousness that's coming out of our kitchen right here in Tirana, Albania, and we are serving it up to you in your kitchen classroom, wherever in the world that may be. You want to welcome to Albania? We want to welcome you in. Click the link, come and join in the community, come and share in the discussion, and come and feast with us on the deliciousness that is our kitchen classroom. I look forward to seeing you inside.